Hello, and happy Wold Newton Day, everyone. Welcome to Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. This is a special bonus episode in celebration of Wold Newton Day, December 13th. In celebration of Wold Newton Day, 2014, I'll be discussing The Shadow, Midnight in Moscow, written and illustrated by Howard Chaikin. It was published by Dynamite Entertainment. This comic book miniseries is notable as being the first overt reference to Philip Jose Farmer's World Newton family concept in comic book format. The series also marks Howard Chaikin's return to the shadow, for the first time since his landmark 1986 miniseries at DC, which revitalized the character. Midnight in Moscow begins on January 31st, 1949, and the rest of the story takes place in the early days of 1950. Whereas Chaikin's 1986 miniseries took place in contemporary times. For reasons I will get into in a minute, Midnight in Moscow can be placed in the Wold Newton universe. Since Midnight in Moscow was a prelude to the 1986 series, by extension the 1986 series can also be thought of being in the Wold Newton universe, if one wishes. If you are new to the concept of the Wold Newton family, here is an overview. I'll get into reviewing the shadow Midnight in Moscow as a whole afterward. The term Wold Newton has become overly synonymous with crossover fiction in recent years, but there is more to Wold Newton fiction than characters crossing over with each other. The brainchild of award-winning science fiction grandmaster and lifelong pulp fan, Philip Jose Farmer, the Wold Newton family is the precursor to such works as Planetary by Warren Ellis and John Cassidy, as well as The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen by Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill. Farmer postulated that fictional characters such as Tarzan, Doc Savage, The Shadow, Sherlock Holmes, and Fu Manchu were all based on real people, and they were all connected thanks to a real-life meteorological event. This event occurred on December 13, 1795, when a meteorite fell from the sky just outside the hamlet of Wold Newton in Yorkshire, England. Hence this day being known as Wold Newton Day in fandom. A monument commemorating the fall of the meteorite still stands to this day and can be viewed on Google Maps if you zoom in close enough. On this day in December 1795, it just so happens two coaches were passing by and their drivers and passengers were exposed to the ionization of the meteor. The group consisted of five married couples, a brother of one of the wives, and the two drivers of the coaches. Those present at the Wold Newton event include Sir Percy Blakeney, who is the starring character from Baroness Orsky's The Scarlet Pimpernel, Fitzwilliam and Elizabeth Darcy from Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice were also there. There were also members of the Drummond, Lupin, Raffles, Lecoq, and Holmes families present. The third Duke of Greystoke was also there. These individuals were already of a heroic ancestry which includes such figures as Robert E. Howard's Solomon Kane and Raphael Sabatini's Captain Blood. They had their genes further enriched by this experience. The different family's offspring would then marry, further reinforcing the traits 
and ensuring they would not become recessive. The core of Farmer's Wool Newton family concept can be found in two fictional biographies of perhaps his two favorite characters. Tarzan Alive, a definitive biography of Lord Greystoke, published in 1972, and Doc Savage, His Apocalyptic Life, published in 1973. It's in these biographies where Farmer first included the Wold Newton family tree, as well as his theory on the Wold Newton meteorite being the catalyst for this nova of genetic splendor that would give rise to the emergence of remarkable individuals over the coming years. Farmer's Wold Newton related material did not end with these two biographies, however. He would continue to insert Wool Newton material he uncovered into his own fiction, thus creating a secret history that readers are continuing to uncover to this day. Author and farmer expert Christopher Paul Carey refers to Farmer's overall body of interconnected work as the Farmerian monomyth. The fact that Farmer left so many breadcrumbs throughout his large body of work is, qu is quite a remarkable feat, due to him writing in various genres and for different publishers throughout his lengthy career. It was only recently, with the reprints from Titan Books, that his interconnected work began to be branded by his publishers as a Wold Newton series. It should also be noted that Farmer's erotic underground novel, A Feast Unknown, published in 1969, which, feature, which features pastiches of Tarzan and Doc Savage, actually predates both biographies. Whether A Feast Unknown and its two sequels, which do not have the erotic elements, are directly connected to Farmer's works involving the Wold Newton family, has been debated among Farmer fans for years. The explicit blend of sex and violence in A Feast Unknown does not carry over into Farmer's larger Wold Newton body of work. As a matter of fact, Titan Books branded A Feast Unknown and its sequels as the Secrets of the Nine alternate universe subseries when they published the new editions. Farmer passed away on February 25, 2009, at the age of 91. I never met the man, but I can imagine him smiling at the first issue of The Shadow, Midnight in Moscow by Howard Chaikin. This is due to page 11, depicting the shadow at a dinner party with friends. But to be honest, these men are more than friends. They're really a family. Joining the shadow at the dinner party are thinly disguised depictions of Doc Savage, Tarzan, Nero Wolf, and Bulldog Drummond. Thanks to Keith Cole for the detective work on Drummond, he asked Howard Chaikin himself. Although these men are members of the Wool Newton family, on the surface, I believe the scene to be a fun crossover moment and nothing more. That is until I reread the issue and noticed the painting prominently placed on the wall in the center of the panel. This painting is of the Wold Newton Monument. Between the painting of the monument and the presence of major Wold Newton family members, I believe this scene goes far beyond just a crossover. It's the first overt depiction of the Wold Newton family concept in a comic book, a fact that author and farmer expert Win Scott Eckert has confirmed. The spirit of farmer's work has continued in prose form with the Wold Newton universe, which is a term coined by Win Scott Eckert. The Wold Newton universe is an expansion of farmer's Wold Newton family concept to bring in more elements into the proposed shared universe. This includes new speculative essays using what Farmer dubbed creative mythography, 
to make connections and explain inconsistencies within fictional works. There have also been authorized continuations of Farmer's World Newton fiction through Subterranean Press and Meteor House. Farmer still has a large following to this day. In the World Newton Universe Facebook group and yearly FarmerCon events are a testament to his legacy. The fact that Howard Chaikin, who provided the paperback cover for Farmer's Great Heart Silver in 1982, put in this subtle nod to Farmer in his work means a lot to us fans, and I imagine it would have meant a lot to Farmer as well. The inclusion of Farmer's World Newton concept in the first issue of Midnight in Moscow really got this series off to a great start in my eyes. For the last six months, I've been looking forward to each issue with great anticipation, and I'm a bit sad that the miniseries has concluded. Looking past the Wool Newton family tribute scene in issue number one, this series was really a lot of fun. I would put it in the genre of historical fiction as much as pulp. I would also consider it an espionage tale. The first two issues establish what the Shadow and his agents are up to in 1950. We quickly learn that the Shadow is planning to retire, and we get to see him mop up the streets one last time. From issue three onward, the driving force of the plot is the Shadow and Margot going up against St. John Upchurch, a rogue assistant director at MI6 and his companion, Dixie Teagarden, a busty good old girl from West Texas with a talent for aiding in blackmail. I don't want to give too much away, but subatomic particles also play a role in the story. The Shadow and Margot also do a good bit of traveling during the course of the adventure. The series begins and ends in New York City, but the couple also travel aboard the Queen Mary to London. They then make a stop in Paris before going to Moscow. If you're a fan of Chaikin's original 1986 series, I think you'll really enjoy Midnight in Moscow. The shadow guns down thugs relentlessly in this, and Chaikin's artwork and action scenes are better than ever in my opinion. His artwork was always amazing, but the benefits of modern coloring techniques really make his work pop off the page. The colorist, Jesus Alberto, really did a great job on this series. While I really enjoyed the jet-setting espionage portion of the storyline, my favorite issues from a story perspective were the first two issues. I really enjoyed seeing the Shadow taking it to the underworld of New York City with a vengeance. One of my favorite moments in the series is when the Shadow meets with Maxwell Grant in issue number two to drop off a satchel full of his final adventures to the pulp writer. It's interesting that the Shadow calls him Maxwell Grant, the house name, rather than Walter Gibson. A moment that made me chuckle was a cameo depicting who I believe to be Archie Andrews buying dope from a drug dealer before the drug dealer is gunned down. Given the time period, the guy's red hair and the Riverdale jacket that he was wearing, I'm pretty sure it was meant to be Archie Andrews. When the Shadow and Margot are in London... I believe Chaikin was making a reference to Sherlock Holmes as well. Both of them seemed to be impressed that an unnamed person was still there, and commented how this person may have been a relative, or possibly a franchise. I think this is a reference to the timelessness of Holmes and Watson at 221B Baker Street. The miniseries just concluded but there will definitely be a trade paperback collection of the series forthcoming. If you're a fan of The Shadow, Howard Chaikin, or Philip Jose Farmer, I think you'll really enjoy this series. I marvel at Chaikin's artwork, 
And he can also tell a great pulp espionage tale on top of that. Well, that concludes this special World Newton Day episode of Pulp Crazy. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in learning more about Philip Jose Farmer's World Newton family concept, Please check out the links in the show notes for further reading and discussion. I included some charts and images in the video cast, so if you're interested in seeing those, check out the video cast or the website. I'll put links to the images in the show notes there. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is located at youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.